And in searching through the discovery that has been turned over with respect to the representation that I made to the court about the number being on the wire, within the discovery that was served in 2022, the phone number that we've gotten the records for and the last name of Mr. Boyer is provided within the Sumlin-Dorsey conspiracy. And I said wiretap. There are two wiretaps that were gotten. This name and this number appears in both, and the name for the number appears in the Sumlin wiretap. All right. And you produced that to the defense as a part of the Sumlin-Dorsey conspiracy package of discovery in 2022. Is that what you're saying? Yes. You distilled that. Okay. And I said it. And do you have anything more specific than that to point out to show, like, exactly when that discovery got served? I do. Okay. The second 2022. All right. And the folder specifically that the number and the name appear in, in the discovery served August 2022, it's folder one, counts in indictment by act. At 181 through 182, Sumlin-Dorsey, count 55, 181 through 182, discovery two, Dorsey conspiracy. And it is the one, two, six call down, which has on it, and I will submit this as states one for the purposes of today. Okay. It has the phone number 470-957-2893-Dorsey and Boyer. All right. Okay. That appears to clear up that issue. Y'all can double check and make sure it's, you know, says what she said it said. I don't know. Let's ask. Okay. If y'all got a screenshot of it, maybe send that email around to everybody so they can see. But... And also, we sent it a second time when we organized the discovery for the defendants. So it's in two different sets of discovery. The first one is from August 2022. Okay. I mean, I'm happy to pass that around at the time because she's got it highlighted. Y'all can all take a look at it, but she's going to email or she or Mr. Atkins are going to email that as well. And then it sounds like it got reserved later in 2022. Thank you, Ms. Love, for digging through to figure that out. All right. And then do you have hands on the affidavit and search warrant yet? I label it Site 2. Okay. I mean, I guess the court reporter is asking about the labeling. So yesterday we had a states one and two, and we sort of had a motion, I guess. 
with regard to, um, I, I guess that was. We labeled it differently. We labeled it States 1 Melnick Proffer. Okay. We labeled today's States Exhibit 1 as States Exhibit 1 August 7. 2024, if that's today's date. Okay, so it's weird, I guess, because I'm sure there are 100 million, I exaggerate, but a number of states' exhibits that have already been in for the jury trial. We're sort of paused on the jury trial and kind of doing, um, we're doing motions and liberty for the most part, really, sort of, but this isn't that either. This is, I don't know what to call this. Disc <laughs> Just don't know what to call this. Um, to the, I mean, let's just say it states one and two to the Boyer discovery matter. Okay. How about that? Yes. <laughs> okay. Can we get a statement? Um, I've got some paper clips. I think we know where it's secret. We can't. saying that the discovery in this case, including, uh, I, I call them dumps or whatever we, okay, one and two came together and all the different additions, three, four, all the way up to, I think there was 13 or 12, um, they're divided by counts. Okay. Okay. So count 55, I believe. Is the conspiracy it's, that it's a, is connected to the drinks murder right no it's no? not oh. no that's one thing it's a conspiracy it's count 55 in this oh. indictment which involves the murder of harold clements well he, he's not doing it right it, it involved well that's not in this indictment it involves what is oh, in this I'm indictment sorry. it's not the a count act. against anybody the count 55 is not a count against any of the six co-defendants on Correct. trial currently, yes. Correct. So it involves something completely and wholly unrelated okay. from the drinks right. murder. True. Okay. I want to play for you so I can show your honor the, scr the screen, but basically if you click on that, that jail call, which I guess is... Mr. Dorsey talking. It comes up on your screen. It says 04282022. I guess that's the date. 428-2022. And it says 2218. And then it says a phone number 470-957-2893. It says Dorsey and Boyer. Okay, it doesn't give a first name. It just says Dorsey and Boyer. Okay. There's no context for us to know who Boyer is, and this is the this is the call that the state is saying. It puts us on notice that a uh, Mr. Boyer is somehow um, suspected and involved in the drinks. Okay. Or, this is this is the call, and I just All want right. to play it. Okay. Your Honor, um, Mr. Sharp, may, Your Honor, if I may just make one point of clarification. We did not represent and are not representing that. The content of that call puts them on notice. What we are saying is that the wiretap, the content of the calls and the wiretap are the basis for our search and getting the records. That's okay, what and, and that. the connection to the drinks murder, but it, it is this service of discovery that says, hey, that phone number from the wiretap 
is connected to the name Boyer. Is it that says, what you're saying? That's what we okay. said. It says That's Boyer, it and it, it just says Boyer. And it, okay. And if you play this, I, I would like to be able to play sure. this. Sure. This is free call from. That's Mr. Dorsey. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse this free call, or thank you for using the security. You may start the conversation now. So someone says, I'm in traffic, I'll hit you back. All right. And... Okay, no, I, I, and, and Ms. Love's clarification is it's not that call that gives you all that notification. It's the wiretap that gives you the notification because the wiretap has all these communications back and forth between this phone number, 404-957-2893, and Mr. Garlington's phone number, and then it's this bit of discovery that Ms. Love just told us about that says, and that phone number belongs to somebody last name Boyer. Okay, but they say they're not using it in the drinks murder evidence anyway. So that actually, I think, takes care of um, Mr. Williams' Motion in limine filed very recently within the last hour or so, I think. Um, saying, keep that out. Is that right? I, and I have to confess, I have not asked you that particular motion, looked at it myself yet. I'm just basing it on Ms. Pressfield's review of it is y'all are saying we want that kept out and the state's already maintaining they will not introduce it. And so yes. granted, but also unnecessarily so. Thank you. Well, I, I added not only case in chief, but in rebuttal for that, um, Mr. Boyer. And then there's a second part to it. We received on Monday for the first time, Agent Bernie's expert report as to a April 26, 2015 shooting of Mr. Carter's tour bus. Okay. Been, it's been referred before the Sound Court as the Lil Wayne bus shooting. Okay. And um, the state has already put up. They said they didn't need to qualify Agent Racy. He's with ATF now. He's former detective in Cobb County, Racy, which is, I'm going to tell you, R-A-C-C-I, but I may have misspelled that. Um, they already put up painfully. It took days tracking phones. They have three to four different exhibits to, to your honorable court's right of your bench. They're um, against the wall, or they should be. I believe that's what they are. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make is now... For the first time, we're getting another expert. Okay. Never gave us this information before. And yes, I've had the records. So I'm not complaining about that. But, you know, we look at everything and we test everything with our own right. independent experts. Okay. So I want that excluded too. That was in the motion as well. All right. So um, with regard to, that's two entirely separate. The, the issue, I realize, is way, way late discovery is what is being alleged. Um, but we're talking about two different sort of pieces of evidence. Um, so with regard to this Boyer plotting of the, wherever the cell phone location is, the state is represented that they do not intend to use this. Um, I'm granting the motion limiting with regard to particularly, it's, it's at least this case in chief. But with regard to if it potentially needs to be used in rebuttal, um, at this point, y'all are on notice. Yes, it should have been produced before now. But we're also, I would say, pretty far away from 
carrying any evidence about the Drake's murder anyway. I am not going to make a blanket ruling at this point that it can't come in in rebuttal either because y'all got time. I don't know if it might need to be used or not. I don't know, but I'm going to leave that for another day if and when it does come up. Now, with regard to this second sort of chunk of information um, that's been, just been produced, Agent Bernie's analysis of self, what does that have to do with cell phones too, or just, or just the incident? He's a cell phone expert, so that's what it deals with. Okay, as, as to the, okay, so what do you say as to that, um, Ms. Love? Because if y'all have already presented your evidence, so what, what's your plan with regard to Agent Bernie's report and analysis? Your Honor, would the court permit me to um, address the first part regarding the uh, Boyer records and get it tender the evidence and then address yes the second yes part of the motion okay so the state is tendering for the court's consideration states 2a Boyer records which is the affidavit for the search warrant and states 2b Boyer records which is a search warrant itself okay the cell phone records and the court is um, correct we stated earlier and state again um, that we are not attempting to use them in our case in chief. As well, Your Honor, I am marking as state's exhibit 2C, Boyer Records. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a screenshot of a search of the um, wire tap data for the number of calls that involve 470-957-2893 and the number of calls within the wiretap that involve this number are 501. So okay. I'm tendering this for okay. the court's consideration. All right, thank you. And, and, and one as well as two A through C are admitted. Okay, turning now to the... Turning now to the Bernie set of plots regarding um, the Little Wayne bus shooting, the data, the re cell phone records, mm -hmm. um, and their cell site location information was turned over, I believe, in July of 2022, if I'm not mistaken. I'm almost certain that we turned it over in the first set of discovery that we served. Okay. So the data that the plots are derived from have been in defendant's possession since July of 2022. The plots that are um, that were made at the request of our office uh, were requested after testimony and cross-examination, testimony elicited from through direct and cross-examination of our witnesses in the Little Wayne bus shooting. Okay. As a result of some of the questions and answers and the direction that we saw that questioning going, we asked for the, we asked for the plotting okay. of the- and, and when did you ask for that? I'll get an exact date. Give me a ballpark. Give me a ballpark. I well, when when did these? Um, in the last six months, that's the uh, All right. I think a narrower ballpark because things were delegated and we did. Okay. When did these people testify to the Lil Wayne shooting? When was that testimony, roughly? January, June, April? April? Okay. So at some point 
It's after April. April. That's a good one. Yes. Okay, let me ask you this. At the point in time when you think it might be relevant to have a plot of whatever cell phones might have been involved. We've already heard everybody's testimony. Man, we'd like to shore that up with some expert rolling back in here and taking the stand again. We're going to get him to plot this. Would it have been possible at that point in time to share with the defense, hey, y'all, we're going to have our expert that y'all already know about anyway, go ahead and plot this too. Yes, that would be. Yes. Okay. Why was that not done? So, we Bernie did not testify about these. He has. I know. Okay. Um, Your Honor, if I may, I'd like to give give the court first the, the more precise time uh -huh. that we got those records. Not when you asked for them, not when you got them. When you asked, asked for, for them, them, that yes. Before I go to that second question with the court's permission. Okay. Go ahead. How long is it going to take to get that information? Can Mr. Christian work on getting that information? We're, it's already been worked on. I already know. Okay. I mean, will the answer differ based on when you ask for the information as to why at the time you asked for the information, no matter when that was, you did not even though you could have, say to the defense attorneys, I'm going to be getting this. I don't know if I'm going to use it or not, but I'm going to be getting it. That is um, the best practice. And we did not, but we, I don't have um, as, as a to, good answer. I mean, and the answer could be because, man, there are only 24 hours in the day and this is chaos and, you know, we're doing the best we can. That could be your answer. I don't know. It's still not a good answer, yeah, we know. but let, let me, let's just maybe nip this in the bud. Cause I did ask you also to, at the lunch break, huddle with your team and see if there might potentially be anything else outstanding, whether Brady or not. Cause none of this sounds like Brady. It's just information that might come in in trial that it would be, you know, just kind of like the way we're supposed to track cases is to sort of share each other's evidence to, you know, with the other side so they know what to expect. So were you able to sort out yet? Is there anything else out there in the universe that you think you're going to use? Judge, we, I use the, I use the lunch break to get that information I gave to you okay. earlier. All we right. are feverishly getting that. All right. So, so all right. right now, what I have for the court is that um, Racy testified on between May 13th and May 16th. So okay. I, I need to clarify okay. that. Okay. And the defense um, challenging him and the, as I said earlier, the questions and answers um, and the follow up cross examination elicited during that time period, May 13th and okay. May 16th, is what caused us to request them. Okay, that's fine. Okay, and, and essentially you acknowledge, yes, we could have gone ahead and let the defense know we were gonna try to get this plotted. You just didn't. And I guess what I need to have happen going forward is that as this trial is going on, First, if there's anything outstanding like that, whether you've got results back or not, or if you're just like, after somebody testifies, you know what, this would be a good thing. Okay. Share it in a timely manner, which is like, not necessarily at the time it occurs to you, but at the time you decide to do it, don't wait for the results to get back. Don't wait till you're gonna call the person to the stand. At the time you say, we're gonna do this. You give that information to the defense, okay? And then when you do get the results back, you can say, we're not going to use it after all. Or we already use it, here's the result. And that is going to go 
be the rule, be the requirement moving forward for everything. So if there's anything out there right now that's kind of in progress, tell them about it. And moving forward, as things come up, when you decide I'm going to be doing something about this, tell them about it, okay? Yes, sure. So what amount of time do you need to get with your team and figure out, is there anything in process? Friday at five too late, or you want me to do Tuesday? I want Friday at lunch. Okay. Well, okay. I don't know what our Friday is going to look like, but yes, you can share it with them without it being in court. So yes, Friday by lunchtime. And you can just copy Miss Persefield or whatever it is you tell them. Okay. All right. And I expect that to be the rule that gets followed moving forward. Okay. Okay. All right. Any questions about it? No. No. Okay. All right. Anything from the defense on that topic and that rule? And I know it is not ideal, but this, you know, it seems that up until recently, this trial was sort of everything was on a rolling basis. No, no. And I can't do a whole lot about that, but moving forward, that's what it's going to be. Yes, ma'am. So, Your Honor, that, that's, everything was, no, sorry, everything was not on a rolling basis. Well. And the rule that you just implemented was already the rule. Okay. Um, Chief Judge Glanville, at a certain point, because we were receiving late discovery disclosures all, right. all the time. Okay. And at a certain point, he said he was fed up. He spoke to the state. He said he was drawing the line there. Okay. And that any late disclosures after that, and he did exactly what you did today. Maybe not in those exact words, but All he right. said, is there anything else? Okay. So he gave the state this opportunity already, and he told Ms. Love specifically that if any other late disclosure of discovery came after that day, that it would be met with remedies and sanctions. So okay. So we're here again, and I'm just asking that before you exercise patience. <laughs> Don't exercise patience. Um, okay. That, that it was already supposed to have been in place and be aware of that. Okay. So, I, I mean, I think that's probably true. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if Judge Glenville had already at some point said, all right, y'all, we got to Judge Glenville, sort all this out. in fact, he had, has, and did in fact say, hey, at, turn, o turn over everything you have. Right. And I'd only say that as trial goes and as we see the direction mm -hmm. that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, trials are kind of living things. I get that. But if, if, even if it took you two weeks to decide, so like by, you know, Memorial Day weekend on May, whatever it was at the end of May, you were like, yeah, let's get this. It's now August. So you had all of June and all of July. So, I mean, I don't, I, the, the, the motion on the floor is to request that um, the plot by Bernie be excluded from this trial. Your Honor, we would ask that the court, since that is the motion on the floor, deny the motion because the data that has been plotted mm -hmm. is, has been in the possession of everyone. That's including cell site location data. Um, since July of 2022, um, Miss um, Counsel for the defendant is correct that Judge Glanville said, "Turn over everything that you get have, and you have a continuing discovery obligation." Right. So, moving to exclude a summary of what has already been given. we would argue is um, an extreme remedy given that the information that is contained in that plot that was given to them has been in their possession since July of 2022. And this is something that we requested. I haven't yet even told, I, I don't get even have the exact date that we received it right. back, but I, we did request it um, 
around May 23rd or shortly after that. All right. And, and the, the plotting that Mr. Bernie did, is that with regard in the report that's come back? Is that in regard to the Donovan Thomas murder? No, the plotting that they're referring to has uh -huh. to do with the Little Wayne bus shooting. Oh, right. Y'all told me that. I'm sorry. That yeah. um, we put up the evidence of. All right. So have you had Bernie testify yet? No. So when he... I see on your witness list that you've most recently provided to everybody um, that Bernie is listed as your expert or not. He's on our visa. Yeah, expert with an expert report and phone records for um, count two. That is the dominant. Okay. So, so we is he then listed again for where yes he he's not in the he's also um in the lat in the last 30 set of witnesses for a different act um and is that the bus shooting the chamel drinks no the bus shooting we've already put up okay of. so are you planning to call him to say and here's the plot of everybody for the bus shooting no what we did was we introduced detective racy to do that but they the defense challenged Detective Racy's ability to do that. Okay. And so for that reason, we had Agent Bernie to plot them. Okay. Okay. So Gracie had already, you had attempted the plotting through that witness? Yes. We had introduced. Okay. Um, or it, we introduced and attempted to introduce plots of various numbers. Uh -huh. There were uh, challenges to Racy's ability to plot various okay. numbers. Okay. There, there were... Um, all right, but you at no point after you knew you couldn't get it in through Gracie said, all right, we may be trying to get this in through Bernie. Did not, no, okay. we never, no, we never all did right. that. And I want to be clear that it, it had to do with the line of questions that were um, put upon Agent Gracie. Okay, so I mean, sure, it only came up that this was a possibility after Gracie testified. We only decided to do that after the after that. We were right. intended to be done with that. But with it's that. still been two months since that time. I, yes. And, I and so that. why is an appropriate sanction not at this point saying you cannot use that information through Period. You can't use that information. I can't let Bernie testify to that. Because two reasons. The remedy of exclusion, as the court is aware, is one that is extreme. And generally, it would be appropriate when there has been some kind of harm and there has been some kind of bad faith. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that that's the only time the court makes the decisions. Our argument would be that it should only be employed. Um, if there's something uh, I, uh, prejudice. Yeah, I understand. So how is it not bad faith? And I don't mean this personally, but how is it not bad faith when you've been ordered by a court, probably orally and in writing, that you need to produce things as they come into being and as you know about them, and then you don't do that? Bad faith would be holding holding it back for some kind of um, advantage, tactical advantage. And if we're saying we don't have to put that up until the last five witnesses and we are at witness 80 in a list of 175, giving them the records or the plots now, literally when... We have people when we okay, okay so, there, so that sounds more like an argument that they aren't really prejudiced because they still have plenty of time to oh. handle it, right? Yeah. It's actually for both because what I was saying is it for to say it's bad faith would mean that we held it back or I mean it's that's still not the only definition of bad faith, but we did not that we <clears throat> we did not hold it back for any. We did not intentionally keep it from them. Okay. It, it, it's, 
So how is it that it came out on Monday or occurred to y'all over the weekend and you produced it on Monday? Is it because I, I mean, because y'all finally got together and said, all right, y'all, what else is there that we ought to be giving them? Why two months later? So, the, the moment that precipitated this disclosure, uh -huh. I, I have to re, I have to rewind and and go back over everything that has happened, and I I can only say that it may have been that the court I know it may have been that as we were looking at. 30 witnesses out yeah. and looking at Bernie. Okay. We realized, oh, Bernie. Okay. So, <laughs> so it basically was just the court saying, it's time to get organized and it's time to share the details about what your intended trial evidence is going to be that finally made y'all get organized enough to realize, oh, shoot, there are some things we have not shared yet. Fair. It is the okay. order that got us to do that. Okay. All right. So that is probably not bad faith. That is it being swamped because there's a lot of evidence. But I am, and I, I, I am exercising patience despite the suggestion that I not do that. And I hear that. I hear that you probably think enough patience has already been exercised. Um, there is a long time before this witness is going to be called for this purpose. It is more difficult to prep for evidence as the trial is ongoing than it would have been before. It's more difficult to do it with two fewer months time than it would have been with two extra months time. Um, it, this needs to be the last of it. I mean, it's sort of like when somebody comes before me on a probation violation and it's the first time I'm seeing them. I don't know what they thought about getting away with anything before that. But once I talk to them, I expect them to abide by it. I expect you to abide by it. So between now and noon on Friday, you better make sure you have got all your ducks in a row and you have shared those ducks and ducklings with the defense. Yes. Okay. I'm about ready to move on from this, but yes, ma'am. Okay, Your Honor, I'll, I'll be brief. Speak into your mic. <laughs> Just... I'll, I'll, I'll try to be brief. All right. Your Honor, in all candor to the court, I, I believe that the state is... Um, arguing as if it's a first argument to you because they know you haven't been here for 19 months. These arguments, I've heard them so many times, it's, it's countless. I understand. Right, right. And for the state to argue it's not bad faith, I'll give you an example of, of things that we've been through before we had the opportunity to, for you to be presiding. Can I ask you a question before you do that? Sure. Is this something that is not already included in one of the numerous motions for mistrial or to disqualify these prosecutors? I don't think so, actually. You don't know? I said I don't think so. Okay. But I'm not sure. But, Go ahead, but this share is it. specific about discovery, okay. disclosure, All right. timely disclosure. The state's been caught before. Specifically, I remember a, dis a late discovery disclosure that once it was disclosed, it actually had a comment on there that was supposed to be internal that said, do not serve yet. They did it on purpose. And how many times can you say, oops? How many times can you repeatedly, systematically make the same mistake as an experienced litigator and say, it's not bad faith? Okay. Your Honor, I'm asking that, I'm just asking that the rules be enforced. Because if they're not, they're not really rules. They're just aspirational. Things. All right, I understand. And um, we are instructed ad nauseum by our appellate courts. They probably won't like my use of that term. Um, that exclusion of evidence is an extreme, extreme sanction and that prior to a trial court instituting that as a sanction, the 
solutions that need to be thought about include a continuance, which is not going to happen here because we've been on a continuance for a while here anyway. A continuance here, it's, you know, no, they cannot bring it up next week. It needs to be way far down the road, which they are representing that it's going to be anyway. So it'll give y'all time to look into whatever it is. And I, I understand what you're saying and I hear you. And the answer to how many times can it happen? Maybe zero more times. Okay. Not trying to keep us from moving on, <laughs> but related to this, yes. my understanding, uh, you know, I'm sitting way back here. My understanding is the state admitted some court exhibits to include the affidavit and the search warrant right. for Mr. Boyer's yeah. phone records. Is that correct? Yes. Could the state, we still don't have those. Okay. So could the state send those to us? Can y'all share those um, by email or should I have copies made of these? And additionally, uh, my colleagues are correct. We would also like all reports that the, the, the the statement that the state has made is there's been a continued investigation into this case, into Mr. Boyer, and we would like okay. all associated reports, investigative reports, summaries, supplements involving the continued investigation since our client's arrest. Reasonable. Ms. Lab, you understand? Yes. Everything with regard to the police investigation of Mr. Boyer and any kind of involvement of his in any of the crimes indicted in this case. And let's ask for it before the end of the day and make sure you have it before. I mean, it, it should be by like sometime mid next week. And if it is going to be any longer than that, you let us all know why. Okay, and so sharing the um, affidavit and search warrant and whatever else it was, is that something y'all can do electronically or do I need to get copies made? I'm actually checking to see if you brought over physical copies okay. of both the warrant and the affidavit. Yeah. All right, let Mr. Atkins look for that, okay? Huh? Yes, and yes, we can provide physical copies. Of Perfect. The if you do not have a copy of the screenshot of the number of times the number shows up in the people. Okay. Um, All right, but you put that on the record, and y'all, um, to see, and y'all are welcome to walk up at the next break and look at it, but it essentially is just this one line that shows however many, 500 and something times, okay? And she's going to share hard copies of two A and B. Okay. Yes. During the trial, you're going to be met by Mr. Williams with an objection to agent rate, uh, agent Bernie's. I'm sorry, say that again. I'm going to raise an objection to Agent Bernie. Okay. About the going backwards, what's testified to, and I heard okay. what the prosecutor said about, oh, this came up because of cross-examination. My memory is strong. My memory is that all of our objections to Agent Racy uh -huh. testifying about cell site location data was overruled. The state put in all this evidence for a long time about okay. where every phone was. So you'll be getting a cumulative. Okay. If that is in fact the case, yes, please point me to where that is. And I mean, if it all came through, if, through Agent Gracie anyway, then I may revisit my ruling. But let's not take that up now. Y'all can file something and point to that part of the part of the testimony. Okay. All right. All right. So back to the plotting detail that we are engaged in with regard to um, Mr. Zachary's April 2017 statement. And let me, before we get back down into that. Um, I was 
going to go back and listen to a portion of the video um, that had to do with item number 13. Let me find my list. Gotta find my list. Y'all have your list, so. Nah, that's fine. I'll just need to have somebody from my staff walk into my chambers and find the three page list with my scribbly handwriting all over it and bring it up here. But I've got an electronic copy of it anyway. Um, Anyway, it had to do with, oh, here it is, here it is, I found it, um, uh, page 54 lines, eighteen through 22, I was going to go back and look because I was trying to figure out who they was, so um, having listened back a ways, and listen forward a ways. Um, it's pretty clear to me that Mr. Zachary, at this point, when they say, uh, when the investigator asks who, who they say killed him, and he responds, shoot, they say Woody and them. I don't know that for a fact, but the they there is who do the people that you were with at the condo later that evening say? So, um, I am going to actually go ahead and I think I had tentatively ruled that out before, but I'm going to permit that after all, because that's to me pretty clear that he's saying that very evening, this is what the group was saying. All right. Okay. All right, so I think we are to, were we on item number 53 at this point? Anybody? We had a line at Okay, right. Great. So then one, then item 53 is on 158. Okay. So 158 lines 12 through 21. Okay. Okay. So then we're at 159, six through one, through all of 160. And I guess the um, objection is this is in incidents entirely unrelated to anything that is a part of this indictment and that it's hearsay. Okay, now what's the state's response? that is out by agreement. 
170 lines 10 through 17. withdrawing my objection but I would concede that this would fall under that same All right. reasoning that you've already admitted the other ones. Okay. Thank you. Essentially we don't need to re-argue it. Cool. Got you. Thank you. All right. So um, my ruling as to this will be the same for the same reasons. And is, um, is, are the items listed in 56 essentially the same again? Same argument? I believe so. I'm just reviewing it to okay. make sure there's nothing. All right. It looks like the first chunk, 174 through 177, is all this kind of same thing we've considered argument about. I hadn't, do you agree with that? It, I do. All right. I also agree that the second chunk okay. as well. I'm, all right. I'm looking at the third right now. All right. Same for that last one, too. Do you agree that the last one's the same as well? I'm almost done. Okay. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rushing you. I just don't want to be... <laughs> Thinking that you're done and you're waiting on me or anything. I, I would agree that it appears that that is all based on what Mr. Garlington said to Mr. Zachary. All right. Okay. And so for the reasons stated before, I am going to admit those three portions of the transcript over objection is obviously assuming they end up needing to come in and foundation is otherwise laid. I do have a motion and I believe that, or not a motion, but an issue that 
is in this section and um, it's going to it's, it's interspersed throughout both the okay. and when Mr. Um, and when Mr. Zachary okay. dies, presumably. Can you talk into your mic? Yes. So my concern, I understand that I disagree with it, but I understand that Mr. Zachary has claimed that my client made certain confessions to him. Um, I would argue that we need to figure out on my client's behalf, what we're doing with the confessions that were made allegedly by Mr. Kendricks um, to Mr. Zachary, because that is, as I understand the law, I don't see, that seems like it's spilling the beans. Um, it does not seem like, it, and I understand that statements made by Mr. Kendricks if the jury believes that he made them, can be used against Mr. Kendricks, mm -hmm. they should not be considered against my client, Mr. Stillwell. And I would assume that all the other attorneys who are representing neither Mr. Stillwell nor Mr. Kendricks would have an argument that those statements should not be considered against their clients if they're being admitted as statements by a party opponent. And for what it's worth, Judge, if I if I can just join on behalf of Mr. Williams, um, I was getting ready to kind of jump in and say the same the same thing that I understand the court's um, pronouncement previously. I understand the state's position as to what they contend those statements are, but in so much as um, we're charged in this indictment, um, and we believe that those statements may be admissible against the uh, those particular individuals who who made them. Mm -hmm. We do not believe that they're admissible against us. We believe that they do fall under the category of spilling the beans um, and that they should not be, um, they may be admissible against that person, but not against us. And we'd object to those statements being admiss admitted. All right. Your Honor, the, if it were that it was, uh, we were only saying statements of a party opponent, um, in that world, I would have one argument. In this case, we have that they are co-conspirator statements and all of the defendants currently on trial and the people who are making the statements are, and the persons to whom they are making the statements are alleged co-conspirators, right. which makes them admissible for each of the defendants. It makes trial. them admissible as long as it is still a statement made in furtherance of the conspiracy. And so y'all are going to need to talk detail to me about when in time and to whom and under what circumstances co-conspirator statements were made, because I can't make a blanket ruling that everybody on trial or everybody indicted everything they ever said to each other is falls under that exception. So let's maybe sit that to the side, but come back to it uh, to the extent I haven't already made a ruling um, because it just is going to depend. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know, you know, let's just, <laughs> let me add that to my list of things we still need to do, but y'all are going to have to bring to me the, the detail about what and when and to whom and all of that. So your honor, that, that, that is for mm -hmm. sure. That okay. is what we expected. What, um, the, what we were undertaking here is not even an assertion right. that, okay. Yeah. So we'll do that another time. Um, one other thing I noticed in what we just um, were looking at is there was mention made of a McDonald's video. And I think just maybe in passing, Mr. Sharp, you mentioned that nobody's ever produced that video. And I just want to make sure, um, does the state have possession of any video from McDonald's? And if not, did y'all y'all or somebody from law enforcement go see if any such thing exists? Your Honor, yes, evidence through testimony has already come in that at least one investigator, along with her partner, attempted to obtain McDonald's video. She was not able to, um, the lead detective was not able to, did not. We don't have any McDonald's video and we don't have evidence that anyone has McDonald's video. Okay. 
And um, as the court already knows in the portions that are reflected in the transcript, it, does, it says someone was trying to right. get McDonald's. Okay, right just want to make sure. Okay. Then, 50, all right, item 57 on page You're going to withdraw it? Okay. All right. Item 58. It's kind of notes to yourself. Yeah, yeah. So I did not do it, the but... best job of laying out exactly what my objection is, but there's it starts out with speculation, it seems to me, about on the behalf of Mr. Zachary about why people are not hanging out with Woody, who's Mr. Copeland, anymore. Um, and then they get into a, a discussion about a word that I don't even use, quote unquote, snitching. Um, and I just don't know what relevance any of this discussion right. has in this case. So to respond to Mr. Sharp's relevance objection, um, what the court has, just to give some background, in 186, on page 186, starting at line one, um, Dennis flat out asks, after Woody came down here and talked to the police, it was almost like everybody was distant from him. And Mr. Zachary says, yeah, we have, and I anticipate we will hear, we'll see through Mr. Copeland. But there are multiple statements that Mr. Copeland gives regarding his distancing from other members of YSL after he went down and talked to the police. That's one thing. Later on, as in line eight, so in line six, Detective Dennis says that, um, did they distance himself from them because they thought he was snitching? Mm -hmm. And Mr. Zachary clarifies, it's, it's not just, it's not about that, but he snitched on the person who shot at him. It's, yeah, it, I mean, it essentially ends up being a conversation like, no, it's that he got the police involved at all. These kind of things ought to be handled amongst the people that, have issues with each other. Yes, and um, okay. so for for two reasons, it sort of tells how they operate, and also um, to the extent if Mr. Copeland says, mm -mm, no, "I didn't say that," yeah, um, it's it would serve to impeach that and to further show that this is how we operate. Okay. I mean, I think it's certainly relevant to showing how they operate. Now, if there is something more in particular about, you know, a certain phrase or a certain question that you think could be excised, 
let me know that. But I think the overall concept is a relevant one in this trial. Judge, let me um let me interpose this if I can. Okay. Um, I, I hear what the court's saying. I, I hear what prosecutor's saying as mm -hmm. well. But for it to be a relevant issue in this trial, it's got to be relevant to, for example, someone's testimony. And the discourse that we're looking at here isn't them saying that, for example, uh, Mr. Copeland uh, isn't saying something or is, or is saying something or people are getting upset at him for snitching. They have this, and, and I'm going to use Mr. Shaw's word, kind of this philosophical discussion about, you know, whether people should be talking to the police or not. Right. Um, and you can have that discussion. They can have that discussion without it and have that opinion, because quite frankly, the detectives are also interjecting their thoughts on why people do what they do. That doesn't make it relevant. You know, they're having this discussion about whether it's appropriate to talk to the police or not. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but there's nothing about that discussion in and of itself that really tells us anything germane about the facts of this case. You know, you, you can say that, um, for example, the, the state can say, for example, well, this goes to show how they operate. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, a person can have an opinion without it going to show that they operated in this particular manner in regards to this case. All right, I, 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 I agree, and you can make that argument to the jury. Thank you. I think it also goes to, um, it, it borders on propensity as well. Um, you know, to say that someone has a, a propensity to act in a certain way that might be consistent with, with, with whatever their theory is for this case. So I, I just, I just think. Okay, well, it's it's, it's not specific other acts, and if it were, it's intrinsic to this set of charges anyway. So overrule. Okay. Thank you. All right, moving to one ninety one. Item number 59. I, I would draw that. All right. Then 192 is our next one. All right, and that's line 16 through 21, Miss Love. Um, we up to 20. Yes, we don't have any objections. All right, to that 16 question. through 21 of 192 out by agreement. I would draw one I did. Okay. All right, so that's you'll withdraw as to your item number sixty one. Yes. Okay. I'll withdraw 62 as well. Okay.
And your honor, um, for 63, mm -hmm. um, if I don't want to withdraw it because if, if you saw the way, it, if you agreed with my arguments about the media on statements, I think it would be inappropriate for investigator Dennis to repeat to make the on statements, but I would, for the purposes of this exercise, I would concede he is repeating alleged facts that Mr. Zachary is saying to told him that fall under your previous rule. Okay. All right. All right, so that's based on the same rulings as before. Okay, now we're at six, item 64, which is on page 206. And your honor, I know you have no context for this at all. Um, so in discovery, there is a, I will, I term it as completely innocuous social media post mm -hmm. of my client that may have been posted on January 10th. I believe it was taken at New Year's, okay. January uh, in 2014 turned into 2015 with my client just kind of standing there and it said, something to the effect of looking at the city with a lot on my mind right. or something like that. Okay. Um, somehow that's being posited as some sort of confession or right. Which I don't really understand. Um, it has not been admitted to evidence yet. I'm going to argue that it should not be admitted into evidence because it has no relevance. Um, so there, there's reference to this right. picture and right. do I guess we, pending... sorry, go ahead. No, you, you, you're, I, you're trying to understand. So do we even have any idea what time it got posted in relation to Mr. Thomas's murder? John, the time I believe is on the postal mm -hmm. it's after, make sure. The time is on the post. And I okay. And my, my memory that I'm going to confirm is that it's around 10-something in the evening, but I'm going to confirm that. I mean, uh, what time was the... 7, it's a little after 7. 7-something seven p.m.? Yes, it was a little after okay. 7.22 to 9 o'clock. All right. At night. It was posted by Mr. Stilwell on January, January 10th at 9.58 p.m. is the time and date of the post, on the post. So January 10th at 9.58 p.m. Yes. Uh, after the, two, yes. Yeah, that, that's, that's 
going to be permitted. In that case, Your Honor, there's nothing in and of, there's nothing about this discussion of it right. that is by itself objectionable. It's just, you know, I object to the, the evidence itself. So okay, yeah. Know. And I mean, I don't know why on earth this part of this would end up being something that gets submitted as a prior and consistent statement. Who knows? But to the extent it does, it can come in because I think that the evidence itself would be admissible considering it's the post and the commentary is two hours after the murder. Okay. All right. Takes us to T15. Um, we'll withdraw that objection. All right. All right. Now we're on to page two twenty two. I am on this one. It's a very simple objection. Uh, they're talking about the phone records and alleged communications between Mr. Winfrey and Mr. Williams uh -huh. on the night of the shooting of the Lil Wayne tour bus. Okay. Um, Mr. Steele and Mr. Adams are, I don't, Investigator Underwood interjects and says, Mr. Zachary is saying that Mr. Williams didn't answer the phone. There was no communication. Right. Investigator Underwood interjects and says, that ain't what them phone records say. And that's not true. Right? That's correct. Okay. In, any issue with taking that out, Miss Love? Just just lines 24 and 25 of page 222. I don't know. All right. Thank you. We're really one through twelve. You gonna make an argument that this should not be redacted? So yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. All right. I don't understand. Okay, so. Item 67 as listed is out by agreement.
And the next one, um, yeah. I don't have any objections. All right. Thank you. And so part of the reason that my initial um, response or reaction to it was to keep it in is uh -huh. only that he was, Mr. Zachary, throughout this conversation, this portion of it, he's talking about his, his own observations as he was with them. Right. Not this particular part. So that's essentially, I mean, I don't know if the overlapping conversation actually, y'all can understand it adds anything, but at least what's on the transcript 20 through 25 is not additive to anything. So can we just strike the entirety of this page by agreement? Yes. Okay. Yes, All right. All right, that, 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 the next one, 225, 1 through 6, appears to be admitted speculation. Unless I'm missing something. Turn into two twenty All right, Miss Love. So, so Judge, um, this portion of it, um, the reason I wanted this in is that it, it so I know why you wanted it. <laughs> why is it admissible? <laughs> so, all right, so I don't have any objections. Instagram flash of money and junk and the nut gang yeah. had done shot up Woody. I mean, Thug's car. No, when he says he, when you listen to some nuts gang, if gang, shot up, and 
I bet, I mean, is that the part that you want? Is that like basically lines 17 through 19? Yes. But Judge, you, you don't look at it in a vacuum, right? We're, if we're talking about looking at it from um, line 11. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just trying to get a handle on what everybody's even arguing. So if she's saying, trying to figure out now, like she's saying, I don't have an issue with some of it. I'm not making a ruling right now. I'm just trying to get a handle on things. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just trying to point out that, the, okay. that the, um, the analysis is the same, whether we're going from 11 to 17 or 11 to 19, it's still the same analysis that what, what this, the speaker, uh, what Mr. Zachary is doing is he is giving his assumption um, as to why something is happening, what people are thinking. Uh, and and, and it, it's clear, right? What he's talking about, well, that's what everybody thinks. And it's because, you know, what he got on Instagram, flashing money. And, and you know, people think that the nut gang had done shot up Woody or Doug's car. You know, all of that is assumption and speculation on his part. It's, it's just not, it's, it should not be admissible. Okay. I don't think it's an assumption on his part that Woody got on Instagram flashing money, is well, no, it? Not, not that part. That's a fact. That, that's, that's a fact. Okay. Woody got on Instagram. Um, and it's also, I think, a fact, but I don't know can tell me differently that um people from if shot at cars in the parking lot that day, night right right so someone's belief those is not evidence okay. and certainly been no no evidence that's an issue for a jury to make no but of. no the fact that this group of people thought that this other group of people that they are beefing with have done some shootings against people in their group is relevant, whether it is true or not. Their thought about it is relevant to the issues on trial right now. Um, so to me, the only way this 17 through 19 comes in is if Mr. Zachary gets on the stand and says, No, I had no idea that Woody got on Instagram flashing money and or no, nobody that I ever hung with ever thought that I have did anything about the shooting in the parking lot that broke a windshield on Doug's car. Right. It would have to be an inconsistent statement. Um, he would have to um, All right. So 17 through 19, that little portion, if he gets on the stand and says one of those things, then whichever part of that is inconsistent, you can say, didn't you on whatever day basically say this? But that doesn't mean 11 through whatever the next page is. That means that we got on Instagram flash of money or that gang done shot up Thug's car, okay? Yes. Um, the rest of it does seem like, well, you know, if other people think such and such, here might be the reason they think it. They don't. Uh, I, I don't see that they have an objection beyond 19. It's a uh, page. I think it's, I believe it's supposed to say two, well. I thought it went all the way to 229. Line 19. Yes, that, that is correct. No, I know, it just says 2219, but he means 22919. Oh, so I have a different response with that understanding as to 228, um, 20 through 24. Okay. All right, so 228, 11 through. 15 or the beginning of 16 is out by agreement. 17 through 19, only in under the very limited circumstances I just relayed. So now 20 through 23. So throughout this trial, um, again, there have been battling contentions regarding the um, Quantes Lamar, who was originally Quan, and um, Defendant Williams. So when ADA Sprinkle asked Judge Rich Homie Quan, and actually this part has 
there's an evidence that um, Rich Homie Blind was affiliated with Donovan. Okay. Um, okay. So when he asked when Gary Zachary that, and Mr. Zachary says yes, yeah, and began talking about it, uh -huh. it, 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 this part of the states, the it, it challenges the notion as he goes further on and explains. And I want to get to the part that he did first. Well, let's just deal with this part right now, 20 through 24. So when he says, when Mr. Zachary says, yes, Yeah. Um, and then talks about the fact that um, Thug and Melt were hanging together right. while Wu and Shell Gale were shooting. Each other. Right. It's just his observation. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't. I don't. That part. Have a you don't have a part with a problem with that part. All right. So that part is in. And there's no objection to that part. Okay. So now we turn to two twenty nine. One through nineteen. And what's your objection, uh, Mr. Chart, to one through nineteen? Mr. Um, Mr. Zachary seems to be talking about not just generalize how this isn't a situation where previously it was argued kind of how the group felt. But he's talking about very specific instances, it seems, where um, they were asking about Jeffrey calling, Mr. Williams calling, speaking with Mr. Thomas, mm -hmm. and then he's saying, no, Woody called Shell Kell, though. And those are very specific instances. Right. I don't know that he, I don't know what his source of knowledge of that is. Okay. Um, All right, so hang on. One through the beginning of five. Miss Love. So there have been um, assertions regarding this call and um, There have been assertions. Okay, so is is any of the assertions that there's evidence to back up the assertion suggested in Investigator Underwood's question on um, about what Thug did? I know that there were suggestions that Nutt might have tried to quash something. Any, any is it just? It, Pure speculation that if he did, in fact, do that, that Thug said F you? I don't object to that coming. Okay. Out. Okay. All right. So one through at least four, the answer no is out by agreement. What about the rest of it? Beginning, Woody called Shell Kill. Nuts hanging with the. And Nut really doesn't get involved with this. Your Honor, my major opposition to this is. is Well, I, I'm going to defer to Mr. Adams on this, if he has a problem with that. I don't really, 
have that much of a problem with it. All right. Neither do I. Okay. okay. Then the objection to four, 129 line four, beginning with Woody Call down through 19 is withdrawn. Thank you. All right. And, Your Honor, yes. Uh, I would, I would endeavor to establish a foundation before I make any kind of proper or ask flat out that kind of question. Okay, I'm in. Sounds good. Okay, moving to item seventy-one, page two thirty-five. problem um, and I know that in some ways this answer is, is helpful to Mr. Williams. Um, I don't at the Mr. Zachary I don't he's saying he doesn't know yeah it, it who who killed Donovan Thomas when it comes back to it. he's tested he he's saying what he heard from Demikia on Garlington but then in a conversational the way we all have conversations, he puts out a hypothetical. If you're talking about Jeffrey Williams, if your circle kills somebody, they're going to think you or that all of them together. So, yeah. And, and the hypothetical, if your circle kills somebody, is, I don't think it's appropriate to have that hypothetical thrown in there because it assumes my client's guilt. Ms. Love. Your Honor, this is two things. Um, we're talking in talking about a circle, a circle, mm -hmm. um, we'd argue he's describing an, the a, a group. He's acknowledging the existence of uh, an association. And he's saying these words to the police after he is according to him, told that two of his group have caught someone down bad. And he's essentially saying if your clique, if my gang, calling it a circle, but they also at various points throughout um, and the earlier interview, they referred to it as a gang in 2015. Um, if my gang kills somebody, they're gonna think that all of them be together. So he's acknowledging the association and in it, he's talking about, he's speaking on something that defendants Kendrick and Stilwell, according to him, have relayed to him. We, um, and that's the way that he tells the police that uh, Mr. Kendrick and Mr. Stilwell uh, told him, we caught that in uh, down bad. And he talks about, um, what okay. we caught him down bad means in the 2015. And even in this one, he talks about, um, I think Mr. Bailey asks, what does caught him down bad mean? He's asked during this interview and he um, clarifies, you know, we sh shot him. Mm -hmm. He says that. So I would argue that um, this, this is relevant and it goes to prove count one um, at, at the very least. And, <laughs> All right, so the because that's just his circle, if Mr. Zachary gets on the stand and says none of these people hung with each other, you can cross him on 
Well, you called these people his circle before. Okay. Okay. The rest of it out. Okay. Judge, my, um, my number 72 is cut off. So is, is it 239, 20, lines 23 to, through 24? I think so. Yes. Okay. okay. I, I didn't have any objection to that. Um, that was the, that was the one that I. Okay. That's, that's like 72. All right. That is. Seventy-two out by agreement. All right, moving to two forty-five through the top of two forty, the very top of two forty-seven. Bless you, Miss <laughs> Miss Ms. Love. So seems inappropriate to come in. It, right now, yes, right. There's obviously going to be discussion about what he's given and all of that, but right now, I, I agree. I don't have any objection to, all right. to, to that. Thank you. But get up to, and we're just, I'm just not objecting to all of what's on. actually lines one through 18 because when he's asked wait, wait a minute one through 18 of page which page 45. because that whole okay. conversation up until that point is about who's going to jail what time you should get okay and all of that but at line 19 when he's asked do you realize how much you contributed to what's going okay. on. Okay. Mm -hmm. He's he he said he's acknowledging some things. Okay. I mean he, he's pled guilty to these charges. But, I mean I don't I don't really foresee him. Okay, well this is only if he says nah, no involvement. Then if she presents the guilty plea and he says, I only pled guilty because I just wanted to get out of jail and I had already served enough time, then she can say, well, I mean, it's also because you actually did them, huh? So under that circumstance, 19 through, uh, well, 19, I'm sorry, 245 line 19 through 246. Line one would be okay. And as to lines two through 14, depending on how you testify. So um, Mr. Zachary at first pushes back on getting guns for uh -huh. them, but he was, at, he was also convicted of straw purchasing. Yeah, and um, he's and busy saying, yeah, I did it. I was young and stupid, but I did it. So, okay. So actually it goes down to 18. All right. So that's three through 18, potentially. Yeah. Okay. I don't have any objections to 19 through 25. Okay, so 19 through 25 out by agreement. So 
So would that go all the way to yeah. line? Okay. So through 247 line two. Okay. Thank you. Under 74, the next one is uh, would fall under your previous rulings about Demikian statements okay. to Mr. Zachary. Okay, so on that same basis. That part would be in. So now we're looking at 249 line 22 through 252 15. all the way through, at least the objection goes all the way through 252 line 15. So let me know about 251 and 252. Now, 251, um, again, only assuming that, you know, makes some assertion that makes the fact that he's sitting right there with his attorney relevant and he's doing a proper. Okay. Um, okay, so. And if he gets on the stand and says, man, everything in that statement, y'all coerced me into, then you can say your attorney was right there. There was no, there's no reason, I mean, I don't. Okay. Absent or reading, I don't know, Absent. All right. So, it, but otherwise, you are good with. Okay, so what about all of 251? And then on to 252, line 50, which may be. All of it. I... Okay. All right. So that is out by objection with the one caveat that if he says you can't believe any of this because I was being coerced, then we can say, didn't you have an attorney with you? Okay. And also, um, so I'm not very familiar with I haven't um, voiced to the court the two areas that I would argue need not come in. I because I think that we should, for clarity, just go through what has been requested by the defense. And I, but I'd like an opportunity. Okay, so we are now at the end of the defense's requested redactions, exclusions um, as to this statement. So if you think that there are things that the state believes should not come in, now would be your time to present those. So, 
Actually, that part that I was going to say, that part is already, I didn't have any objection to the 252 up through line 15. That was actually. Right. Got it. And then, so. The part that the state had concerns about it were page 205. Page 205, um, where Jenna says, who do, who do you believe has something to do with it? Um, just Rudy by, by himself. And Zachary says, um, yeah, think about it. Um, and then Dennis says, but they had to know what is their motive, um, what would be driving them to participate in it. And Zachary says, Rudy, essentially, now it's his, him saying, I think, despite what Mr. Kendrick and Mr. Silva have told me, I think this. I don't have a, I, I would argue that it is a false assertion and understanding it is an inconsistent statement with what he has said earlier. One could argue that it's admissible, but just because he's saying, he's, he's asserting that it's speculation. I don't follow you. Are you saying that 205 lines, I guess, what, four through, I don't know, one through 23? No, it was seven, I don't know, 11. Okay. Well, 11 starts with by itself. So there has to be some reference to Woody before them. Nine. Okay. And maybe the indiscernible part on eight is where he mentions Woody. You might want to go look back and look at that or listen to that. But, okay, so he's saying, Zachary is saying, I think this was Woody. And if the others were participating, then it's because, you know, he got a good talk with them. So when would you be planning to use that? I, I wasn't. I think I was the court. You wanted, yeah, you wanted out. Yes, that's what I was saying. Okay. And why? It wasn't addressed and I was saying it was not out. Okay. Why? Because he is asserting that I'm just speculating. He's, I don't believe his... Where is he asserting that I'm just speculating it? When he says... Uh, who do you believe? Okay, so this is like, here's here's what I think. So, I mean, uh, yeah, it's relevant. If he's saying these two people told me that they had involvement... That's, that's what I was Yeah, okay, so I'm thinking... This, this is not redactable unless, yes, okay. Any other parts? No. no. Okay. So we've gotten through the April 13th, 2017 transcript. Uh, well, not, yeah, that interview with Mr. Zachary. Let's take a bathroom break. Be back um, in about 12 minutes at 3.30. Yes, sir.